In the countdown to World Vape Day, ant-driven regulations continue to eviscerate vaping. But data clearly shows that these regulations only drive more people to smoke deadly combustible cigarettes. Meanwhile, the U.S. FDA places its modified risk tobacco product approval stamp on Philip Morris's Heat Not Burn Icos, and China sells out to the Bloomberg, Bloomberg, Bloomberg conglomerate known as the World Health Organization. Lastly, I'm going to light a banana on fire to prove how ridiculous it sounds when people say vaping is smoking. Vaping is not smoking. I'm DJ Alex, your cynical tobacco harm reduction activist. And this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday, Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 28th of May, 2021. Well, Sunday, May 30th of this year is World Vape Day. This coming Sunday, the clock is ticking down. There's a countdown clock. We're going to see that later. And the World Vapors Alliance wants you this year to go the extra mile and focus on the good that vaping brings to society. So, with this in mind, I'm not going to be cynical about how the U.S. Food and Drug Administration hasn't yet approved any vaping product, but I am going to applaud them for certifying a heat non-burn system as a modified risk tobacco product. And I'm going to totally forget that the despite that the FDA has been presented with scientific evidence from hundreds of vape product manufacturers that contain millions of pages of scientific findings about vaping's product safety and the harm reduction of vaping products compared to combustible tobacco. I'm just going to sit back and applaud them in the name of tobacco harm reduction. Yeah. Congratulations, Philip Morris. It's only taken you $8 billion since 2008 to scientifically prove that not lighting something on fire is beneficial to your customers. Maybe you should have bought out Herbert A. Gilbert's patent from the 1960s and then just added some flavored nicotine. So perhaps, just perhaps, I could have benefited from not breathing in your product lit on fire millions of times during the time that I was a smoker. Or maybe you could have caught on to how Han Lick used a high-frequency piezoelectric ultrasound-emitting element combined with a heating wire to vaporize a purified liquid containing nicotine to produce the modern electronic cigarette in 2003. Or maybe you already knew about the dangerous effects that your products have. And maybe you knew about it 20 years before I was even born. Maybe you already knew about how your products were killing millions and millions of people every single year. And maybe you already knew that your combustible tobacco products are sprayed with herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, concentrated nicotine, ammonia, and who knows what else. And how about that that kills every single one of your lifelong customers? Eventually, it will kill every single one of your customers. Oh, wait a minute. In April of 1994, you admitted to a master list of 599 additives used in the production of American cigarettes after it was made public. And over 100 of these additives are specifically put in there to either enhance addiction or to mask the negative effects of breathing in smoke from lighting your products on fire. And see, you knew that these additives dilate the airways, making it easier for your customers to move all of that smoke deeper and deeper into your lungs, depositing higher and higher levels of tar 
into the lungs. And you knew that these additives exponentially increase the addictive potential of nicotine. Because, see, you also know that nicotine by itself cannot addict your customers. So, here you go. You spray additives on ground-up tobacco stems, leaf scraps, paper, and even the dustpan collections from your factories to make nanofiber reconstituted tobacco that gets blended with actual tobacco for the modern day cigarette. And I'm not even gonna get into how tobacco smoke has a particle size of one micron down to 0.01 microns, and it damages the DNA in the alveoli of every single one of your customers. Nope. I'm going to turn the cheek and focus on the positive aspect of you getting the FDA to admit that not lighting something on fire is healthier than breathing in byproducts of combustion. So, with that logic, it should be pretty obvious to everybody that all vaping products are healthier than smoking. And all vaping products need to have a modified risk tobacco product certification. And with people dying every single day from smoking, it needs to happen yesterday, not some unknown date in the future. Rant over. Well, sorta. How about Vermont settles with online sellers of electronic cigarettes who violated their ban on selling vaping products online to competent adults in Vermont? Yeah. Vermont's dumbass attorney general is bragging about how he got a $150,000 settlement with TB, TPB International, who was unlawfully selling safer products from a website. And now, this company and all the other companies that they busted now need to notify that their customers that they can no longer supply them with vaping products. They need to tell Vermont adults that they can only go to wholly licensed wholesalers and retailers that reside in the state of Vermont and that those shops have already paid the required Vermont extortion fees and are the only places where they can purchase electronic cigarettes. Yeah. Okay. Like I can forget that every single gas station in the state of Vermont, every single convenience store in the state of Vermont, every single grocery store in the state of Vermont, and even some department stores carry combustible tobacco. But now if you want a safer harm reduction product, well, you got to go find a specialty shop in Vermont or travel outside the state because, well, the online purchasing of those products is illegal in the state of Vermont. And you wonder why I'm cynical? Let's move on to some international news, okay? Let's take and find something positive about vaping. So let's look at New Zealand, right? Because New Zealand, we all know. New Zealand and their position on vaping. So let's take a look at New Zealand. Because, see, they have the, their own Ministry of Health publishes a website called Vaping Facts. It's the Vaping Facts website. And if you don't know about it, you have to go check it out. It's vapingfacts.health.nz. So, what's going on in New Zealand? Hmm. Let's dig into the news and see what's going on. Uh, students expelled from posh private school for vaping at camp. What? Kerry Kerry's Superbank school principal, Mike Warren, was unapologetic for the school expelling several students who engaged in serious misconduct. And now the parents are saying that the punishment was too harsh. 
probably has something to do with the non-refundable $3,270 they paid for each student's term. Meanwhile, three other students also face disciplinary action. You ready for this? For vaping and sexual interactions. What? A student is expelled for vaping and other students face disciplinary actions for vaping and sexual interactions? I'm guessing that some of these parents paid way more than the required $3,270 to keep their kids in this posh private school, while others, well, they're just going to expel them for misconduct. Makes total sense to me. Oh, man. Well, since international news sucks, let's move back to the United States. Where Illinois' House bill passes tackling youth vaping. Yeah. Senate Bill 512 prohibits advertisement of uh, vaping products um, that are targeted to teenagers. Uh, okay. Okay. There aren't any manufacturer ads already because there's already existing laws that prohibit them. But let yourself feel good by passing another law that does something another law already does. And what does this new law also do? It also requires vape shops to verify customers are 21 or older when purchasing products. Wait a minute, don't you already have another law saying that you have to be of legal age to purchase tobacco products. And since the omnibus bill redefined all vaping products as a tobacco product, isn't, doesn't that already apply? Um, hello? Do you realize that this does nothing to teen vaping rates? Because it's already required by other laws and the kids don't care about these laws. They already ignore them. Here we go. It's another politician circle jerk passing unnecessary laws, complicating something that doesn't need to be complicated because it's already complicated enough by the last set of laws that they passed. And even the politicians admitted that during the discussions about this vaping bill. And they actually had vaping industry representatives testifying there. And the vaping industry representatives, what did they say about this? They said that they wished that the bad players would stop selling these adult products to kids. But see, the bad players are the black market. And when you make the regulations more and more difficult, more and more burdensome and cumbersome for legitimate businesses to actually follow the law, all you're doing is growing the black market who doesn't give a shit about your laws. We've already got other regulations that make it impossibly hard for a legitimate business to legitimately sell a legitimate product. But here the politicians are bragging that this, is, this isn't going to unfairly impact existing industries. You're talking about the cigarette industry. You're talking about big tobacco. These laws are not going to impact big tobacco but they're going to kill every single small mom and pop shop that has found their quit smoking success story to be a motivation to start a business so that other people can quit smoking too. And this is making it impossibly hard for them to continue operating. That's what it's about. The truth finally comes out. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Let's move on to Oregon. Because, see, Oregon lawmakers, they just approved the ban for online sales of vaping products to protect the youth. More like Oregon House Bill 2261 just made it harder for Oregonian adults to get away from deadly combustible cigarettes. So once again, Winston, Pall Mall, Marlboro, Newport, Cool, and all of the other tobacco company products, well, they get a pass on having any kind of competition that might, you know, displace all of their customer base and move them on to a 
safer harm reduction product. Sure, that makes total sense. Uh huh. Tell me this isn't about money. Because adults who want to find a safer alternative product to smoking carcinogen filled death sticks must now travel to a vape shop to get harm reduction products. Meanwhile, combustible tobacco is available everywhere. What a shocker. Nothing happens to combustible tobacco, but the safer nicotine product, you have to go find it. And you can't get it online anymore. Sorry. What a shocker. Not really. You want a real shocker? How about China's central authorities have warned their public about the health risks associated with electronic cigarettes? More like the Bloomberg-held, Bloomberg-led World Health Organization's National Health Commission, excuse me, is looking at the 300 million people who smoke and see a huge market opportunity for their benefactor pharmaceutical companies to benefit with their prohibitionist mentality. Yeah, the World Health Organization's mentality is quit or die from smoking. Forget about the 95% safer nicotine products. Only focus on the fact that it's not 100% safe. Only focus on the 1% or the 3% or the 5% danger of completely switching to electronic cigarettes. Yeah. Forget about the fact that it's harm reduction down to 1% or 3% or 5% of the harm that you get from lighting every single cigarette on fire and breathing in that smoke. Forget about how the tobacco companies infuse 599 additives into each and every cigarette for the sole purpose of amplifying and prolonging the addictiveness of burning tobacco. Yeah, sure. Lump electronic cigarettes that only consist of vegetable glycerin, propylene glycol, nicotine, and flavors with a product that has 599 additives plus tobacco. Plus that product is burned through combustion to create over 7,000 chemicals. Hmm. Four ingredients versus... 600 ingredients. Which one do you think is going to be safer? Wow. Such a hard decision. Do I use something that's got four ingredients or do something that's got 600 ingredients? And for me to use it, I got to light it on fire and then breathe that in. Why is this so complicated for everyone to understand? What are the health professionals being told about this hard choice, vaping or smoking? Let's take a look at Psychiatric Times to see what the PhDs are saying about this subject, okay? Here's what they say. Vaping. One word, but not one behavior. Hmm. Sounds promising. Not so much. But we'll get to that later. Because I have a New Republic article titled, and I quote, The weak, unconvincing case against vaping. Has our collective concern over teen vaping led us to ignore the lives of millions and millions of smokers? Holy shit. This is, this is the press finally getting it. They finally get and see the big picture in this whole harm reduction advocacy arena. How about academia? Is there a shift in their mentality as well? Well, 
This week, I took a look at Yale News. Sorry, Harvard. You missed the boat. So what does news.yale.edu say about flavored vaping? I'm going to give it to you straight up. This is exactly their stance on it, word for word. Ban on flavored vaping may have led teens to cigarettes, study suggests. I think I'm going to need a drink before this news report is over today. The Yale School of Public Health published a study in JAMA Pediatrics documenting how the San Francisco ballot measure that banned flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes and flavored vape liquids, had the opposite effect of what the lawmakers intended. It pushed minors toward cigarettes instead of allowing the population to use non-combustible options like e-cigarettes. And they're not the only ones. The Foundation for Economic Education just published an article titled Deadly Mistake. Ban on flavored nicotine products led teenagers to smoke more cigarettes. Study finds. Here's how it all went wrong. Mm-hmm. And I need you to hear this. And I simply cannot just leave this for the end of the news news report because I know 30% of you watch the entire news report and the rest of you bail when it's not a summary. When you actually have to look at the article, you bail. So here's the, here's the information straight up, okay? It says every human action has both intended and unintended consequences. And this comes from economic economist Anthony Davies, and political scientist James Harrigan, because he explained to this organization, the human beings react to every rule, regulation, and order that the governments impose, and that their reactions result in outcomes that can be very different than the outcomes that the lawmakers originally intended. Time and time again, we see sweeping regulations backfire and have unintended consequences that achieve the exact opposite of their original goals. And these guys actually dubbed it the Cobra Effect. Yeah, they told a very comical yet very revealing tale of how an Indian city placed a bounty on cobras to try and solve their infestation problem. But... The end result was the exact opposite of what they intended to do. Why? Very simple. See, at first, more more and more people started hunting cobras to get the bounty. And then the cobra population started to decrease. So what did people start doing? Well, they wanted that bounty. So they started breeding and raising cobras at home in order to get more bounties turned into the government so they could make more money. It's the economic side of the drug war. When the government canceled the bounty because the population had seemingly declined to the point where when they sent scientists out, they looked around, they couldn't find any cobras anywhere. You know what the citizens did when the government did away with the incentive to turn in cobras? Well, they took all the cobras that they were raising they cost them money to raise, and they released them into the wild. And the end result was that the government had a worse infestation of cobras after they got done messing with the situation than they had when they started with. And the same kind of backfire story is playing out every single day in San Francisco. And the pattern isn't coincidence. It's how big government always works out. I'm telling you, the tides have shifted. And on the eve of World Vape Day, everyone is finally starting to understand some common sense. And with all this realization going on about vaping, you have to wonder, what is British American Tobacco doing? I mean, we already know Philip Morris International understands tobacco harm reduction. And they understand vaping. And you know that British American Tobacco has got to be doing something. 
They've been doing, their R&D department has been publishing countless scientific articles. I keep coming across them and they keep getting dismissed because it's funded by Big Tobacco. So we can't pay attention to them. They're not, they can't. It's physically impossible for Big Tobacco to do real science. So we just dismiss it and only pay attention to scientific studies that are done by other people that we can't prove Big Tobacco or Bloomberg paid for them. Mm -hmm. So what did um, British American Tobacco do on the eve of World Vape Day? They published scientific evidence, which is a culmination of 10 years of scientific study and research on the subject of vaping. And here's the summary. Are you ready for this? Switching to vaping reduces health risks. Vaping products provide alternatives for smokers who would otherwise not quit smoking. Vaping products are tobacco harm reduction. And population modeling studies cited in the review clearly demonstrate a significant reduction in premature deaths that can be achieved if smokers are let or given the option to switch exclusively to vaping rather than continue smoking. Yeah. And this study contains over 300, 300 peer reviewed scientific papers and other evidence published by over 50 institutions over the past decade. And they even provided a 12 page summary in a PDF file for anyone interested in the facts to easily understand the scientific truth. This is truly amazing. Almost as amazing as the Australian ABC article documenting Tash Barlow, who started smoking at the age of 16 was smoking 20 cigarettes a day and tried everything impossible to quit smoking, but she simply couldn't quit. Even knowing that she was pregnant and has a baby on the way and knowing the damage that smoking does to her body, she was unable to quit smoking until she tried vaping. And here's her exact words. As soon as I picked up the vape, I didn't need cigarettes anymore. We were using nicotine in our juice and we just gradually cut down on that as well. Wow. That's my story. That's what happened with me and thousands upon thousands of other people around the globe. And it happens on a daily basis when people learn how easy it is to quit smoking with this. They quit smoking. And after trying everything multiple times, like she did, the only thing that stopped, let me stop smoking, was vaping. Yeah. And the last news article for today was written by Michael Landel from the World Vapors Alliance. It's titled, why an impending flavor ban in the Netherlands matters for all vapors. Ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, it's been another battling week in here. Added up another, oh, I don't know, 10 meters, 10 square meters of sound treatment in this room. But today, the neighbor is having their gas line replaced. So there's construction going on out there. Fortunately, the sound treatment in here seems to be doing the job. However, it is the eve of World Vape Day 2021. And the World Vapors Alliance is asking everyone to go the extra mile this year so that other people find out about how truly wonderful vaping can be, how it is a form of tobacco harm reduction like anything ever 
seen before in history and how it will eventually eliminate all combustible tobacco use on the planet. Yep, World Vape Day 2021 is a cell is a day celebrating vaping. It's going to highlight the benefits of tobacco harm reduction in general and of vaping in particular. We want to deliver a positive message about vaping and focus on the good that it brings to society today and every day in the future that as long as it's here. As long as the politicians and as long as the big tobacco companies and the pharmaceutical industry and the healthcare industry doesn't relegate it to oblivion in the name of their own self-interest. So, if you're not a member of the World Vapors Alliance, go to their website. It's worldvaporsalliance.com. And you can take a look at it. There's going to be a link in the description below taking you directly to World Vape Day. And they have all kinds of activities set up, all kinds of programs going on. They're going to even have a vape trick show to start it off. I'm not going to sit here and just focus on this because we've got so much else to cover today. It's just, it's unbelievable. It's like the floodgates have been opened and all of this information is finally seeing the light of day. Well, here we go. Philip Morris received their modified risk tobacco product certification. In order to get the certification, you have to be a legally approved product for sale in the United States. And then you have to fill out the additional paperwork and fill out the additional requirements so that you can fill in and apply for the modified risk tobacco product certification. And all it basically does, all this hoopla and rigmarole, it just simply says that your products have less risk than taking tobacco, lighting it on fire, breathing it in hundreds of times a day, that's all it says, that it is less risky than smoking. Seriously? It's obvious. How much did it cost Philip Morris to get the ICOs to get this designation for the United States Food and Drug Administration? That simply means that it's less harmful than smoking. $8 billion. And they started it in 2008. Mm hmm. You want to tell me how mom and pop store can comply with the federal regulations, let alone the state regulations and any of these ridiculous local regulations that some idiotic politicians seem to be parading through left and right? No, there's no way in hell any small business is able to keep up with all this stuff. If Philip Morris has to spend $8 billion to get the FDA to say, well, that heat not burn thing, that's a little safer than lighting tobacco on fire. It means nothing, but it does mean a lot. Dalton, your perspective on the situation. Yep. Because common sense will tell you that every single vaping product that's out there, because it only has four ingredients that get vaporized, it's got to be safer alternative than the product that is the existing standard for everything else. And the existing product has 600 ingredients. And then you take those 600 ingredients and you light it on fire and then breathe it in. I mean, sulfuric acid presented in the right environment could probably be safer than that. But let's not get carried away. Don't want to be accused of being cynical. But we'll get to that later. Let's move on to Vermont. Because, man... The attorney general there is a dumbass. And he's full of. The bullshit meter has detected major BS. 
Confirmed. That's definitely some bullshit. Sure is. The Attorney General of Vermont is applauding the fact that he got $157,500 in penalties for violating Vermont's ban on online sales of vaping products to individual Vermonters over the internet. Yeah, because that's what we want to focus our energies on, stopping people from having access to the safer alternative product to smoking. Millions and millions of adults every single day light up billions of cigarettes all around the globe. But we're going to focus on the safer alternative product because, well, we might get Timmy or Tina addicted to nicotine. Let me tell you from firsthand experience. See the nicotine that goes in this? It's not the same addictiveness as the nicotine that happens and is consumed when you light a cigarette on fire and breathe that in because it's lacking all the additives. And it's so easy. You can make your own liquid at home. And to be honest with you, it actually tastes better than most of the e-liquids that I bought in the stores because it only contains four ingredients. And when you keep the recipe simple, it's simple. And it tastes great. And that's what keeps me from going back to buying a pack of cigarettes, which is available everywhere on a daily basis. And I don't even need to use the nicotine anymore. That's the best part of it. When you only consume nicotine in the aerosolized vegetable glycerin and flavoring, it's easy to lose the nicotine in your solution. It's easy to taper down. What isn't easy to taper down or away from is combustible tobacco. But I'm just one person, so it's not a valid statement, according to all these idiots. Moving on, because this, I, I tried. I'm like, you know what? New Zealand will definitely have something positive that's going to happen, you know, uh, some indication of what's going on in there. I mean, I understand they lost half of their tobacco tax revenue last year, so they're on a little edge right now trying to figure out how they're going to make ends meet. Because, I mean, realistically, tobacco tax revenue all around the globe in every single country has become a major crutch for the governments to continue operating. And they're not even spending the tobacco revenue on keeping people away from tobacco like they say they do. What do they spend their money on? All kinds of other stuff. They have nothing to do with it. So what happens when people all of a sudden quit smoking? Well, politicians go into a panic mode because how are they going to be able to justify giving themselves a raise if the government's in the red and not making any money? Greedy bastards. Almost like what we find here. Because this doesn't make much sense, does it? We have parents saying that the punishment is too harsh. Well, when you do something wrong and you get caught with your hands in the cookie jar, you should take your punishment, learn from it, and not make the same mistake twice. Okay. That seems to be what is needed with all the teenagers that are uptaking vaping. Maybe their parents ought to be a little more definitive about the administration of consequences to their children when their children make mistakes and not blame the manufacturer of the product that the kids were using. No, people don't take responsibility. So it's up to the government to do something about it. Mm -hmm. Well, here the school administrator dispensed some definitive justice and expelled the student who was vaping. At least three students were excluded or expelled from Carrie Carey's Springbank School for vaping at the camp in February, and their fees of $3,270 for each term were not refunded 
And since the camp, three other students have also faced, faced disciplinary action. We'll see, you made an example, the first one's a camp and you expelled them and all they did was vape. But since then, because see, kids do what kids wanna do, since then what happened? Oh, well, you caught three more students and now you're gonna have to discipline them too. Except see, these kids, these last three kids were vaping and they had sexual interactions. So what did you do to these three? Huh? Well, they were engaging in serious misconduct and they knew that there would be likely consequences. Did you expel them? No? Why? Oh because their parents gave you a lot more than $3,270 to overlook the occurrence. It's amazing when these oligarchs, kids, do things, how they seem to be treated completely different than you or I. Let's come back to the United States, since the situation in New Zealand doesn't look very good. Well... Here we go, Illinois House passes bill tackling youth vaping. They tackle it head on. Yeah. Get rid of that youth vaping. Did it, did it, is it going to work? Or is it going to have the same effect that all these other places do when they completely prohibit stuff? Because what did this bill actually aim to do? Oh, well. We're going to prohibit advertisements for vaping products that are targeted towards teenagers. I would like to have somebody. And if you guys watching this know of one, please forward it to me. DJ Alex at hunkyvape.com. I want you to show me these advertisements that are targeting teenagers. Because I have never in my entire life seen one. And with me doing all the research every single week on vaping and been doing it now since I became a vapor. I've never seen one. So if you got one, I'd love to see it. Because the only advertisements that I see about vaping are from the anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots. And the federal government making Hollywood produce a cartoon to tell kids how bad vaping is. You know, when I was growing up, that was called motivation because it made it seem... Ooh, that would be risky if we broke that law. I tried that out. That would be pretty cool, wouldn't it? That's what's cool when you do something that's just a little bit illegal. And then you also have the natural instincts, the inane hin instinct in every single human being when you're growing up. It's called curiosity. What's the big fuss about? What is it like to try one of these? I don't see the big deal. Why, why are they making such a big deal about this? Well, it tastes all right. Huh? Oh, well, let's go try something else. This isn't, this isn't exciting. So let's go try something else. Oh, let's get the skateboard out. Our kids don't do that anymore, huh? They do everything online. TikTok and all these other social platforms. We didn't have any of that stuff when I was growing up. So what's this politi politician-led circle jerk going to actually accomplish? Nothing. Other than make it harder for small businesses to stay in operation. But that didn't stop all these elected representatives in the House voting 107 to 7 to pass this law that tackles youth vaping, even though all the aspects in this are already lost somewhere else in the state. Just there to make them feel good and look good and have something to throw on their reelection posters. 
And man, I took care of that youth vaping problem for you guys. So don't worry about having to be a real parent. No worries. Well, Oregon Senate approved House Bill 2261. Same bullshit idea. Oregon lawmakers approved the ban of online sales to vaping products to protect the youth and make it incredibly hard for Oregonian adults who want to give up their combustible cigarette habit to find and have access to the safer harm reduction products. Sorry, adults. Got to do it for the kids. I have kids. I have one in the military. I've talked about them before. If you haven't seen my original video that I posted on here, go see it. You want to know who I am? And why I do this every week, go watch it. And you'll come to find out. I have a son who was in the military. He was in the military deployed overseas in Afghanistan. Whenever Trump decided to sign the Tobacco 21 law in the bill, that became effective the moment the pen stopped moving. Never in my life have I ever seen a bill that became law like that. He always grandfathered it so that it would start after they were out of office. So you couldn't get pissed off at them for doing it because you didn't even realize what was going on until after they left. And then you blame it on the new guy because you're uninformed and lazy. Don't want to find out what's going on around you until somebody else goes, whoa, what happened? Well, here we go in Oregon. They just made it harder for adults to be able to access the safer nicotine products. No more online purchases for you in Oregon. But this right here is even more of a shocker than that. For the first time, China says vaping is a health risk. You gotta be kidding me. That's three gallons of bullshit in a two gallon bucket. Sure is. China's central authorities have warned the public of the health risks associated with electronic cigarettes a first in the country's highest level of government. A joint report Wednesday from the National Health Commission and the China Office of the World Health Organization said that there is sufficient evidence that vaping is unsafe and harmful to health. Mm -hmm. since, Chinese already, since Chinese authorities began tightening supervision of electronic cigarettes in March, the vicarious vaping industry has seen its stock prices plunge well of course they do when the regulate hitting authorities say oh water is dangerous you need to get rid of it guess what's going to happen to the sales of bottles of water am, am i the only one that understands basic common sense on this planet what a joke we know where this is coming from, because when you lead, read down into it, you come to realize who's behind all this. It's the World Health Organization mm -hmm. and the Chinese National Health Commission. They call for an immediate action on World No Tobacco Day, which is Monday, the day after World Vape Day. And we urge everyone to commit to quit because do or die works really good yeah worked great how's that war on drugs going uh-huh how about the opioid epidemic what happened to that did we did we win that one no because see the pharmaceutical companies are making profits on it so we made a big hay about it but did it change if you know somebody that drives an ambulance the EMT or paramedic, go ask them. Has the number of people overdosing on opioids dropped? You know what they're going to find out? You know what you're going to find out if you go ask them? No. We still get calls all the time. People dropping like flies. It gets better for a while, but some drug dealer gets a bad batch in and we get a rush of kids and adults that we have to take to the hospital because they overdosed. Because it's fentanyl-laced drugs. Prohibition works great, doesn't it? 
Making it illegal really stops people from doing things that you don't want them to do. There'll be a link in the description below if you want to look into this. It's time to move on. This news report is going to turn into something way bigger than what I originally intended on for today. But I couldn't stop when I kept coming across these articles and it was just... What do the PhDs say about vaping? Psychiatric Times. This is where the psychiatrists go to keep up to date on modern clinical findings and recommended courses of treatment and action for you to follow as a clinician. And depending on your specialty and your country and your location, the regulations that are required by your health ministry and your health organization and your regulating bodies, you have to actually complete continuing education requirements reading so many articles, attending so many lectures, and doing all this stuff. So what are the modern-day clinicians being told to do? Well, this is an informative article for them to learn about vaping. One word, but not one behavior. Vaping is a method of substance inhalation that delivers anything from blueberry-flavored vitamin D to Delta-9 THC into the body. Well, it can be, but you are an idiot if you want to vape all these different substances and expect everything to be perfectly fine. The vaping I talk about week to week is nicotine vaping for the purposes of smoking cessation. You want to go and vape this other stuff because your government has determined that cannabis is illegal where you live? Or you want to experiment and put all this other stuff in there? Make sure you don't tell everybody that you were just vaping when you got sick and died. Okay? Because I'm sick and tired of hearing about all these stories. And when I look into it, I dig deep. Guess what I find out? Hmm? It wasn't nicotine liquid they were using when they got injured. It has nothing to do with a volley. But a volley is vaping damage and is preventing adults who smoke every single day from accessing the safer alternative product to their combustible tobacco habit. Millions of adults are dying every single day because people that are using illegal substances and illegal drugs and they decided to dump it into a vaporizer just because they thought it'd be cool and be something different, got hurt. But when they went to the hospital, they can't tell anybody that they were using an illegal substance because, see, then their health insurance won't cover their visit to the hospital. So they say, hey, man, I was just vaping some candy cane, and I got sick. You can see when they do the cultures and the sputum samples, they realize it was THC. Mm -hmm. It was all from vitamin E acetate that is used to thicken THC oil to make it. I'm not going to get into that. The sad reality is, is Modern medicine is pushing the same agenda because that's what they hear in the news. They don't have the time to actually look in and find out what it is. I mean, yeah, as a clinician, you need to understand that there's going to be people out there doing all kinds of stuff. If you had somebody like Trump who says, oh, maybe we should be inhaling bleach. And you had somebody that inhaled bleach. Would you blame that on vaping too? Because they used a nicotine vaping setup. Or would you blame it on the fact that it was bleach that caused them to get sick? It has nothing to do with this. It has to do with the idiot that put stuff in there that didn't belong in there in the first place. But I don't want to get into that topic. Let's move on. Because I came across this article and I'm like, independent journalism at its finest? 
is this is this just a single website single publication somewhere in the internet that hardly anybody knows about or is this the tip of the iceberg on a much bigger penetration to society well here we are in the new republic came across this article says the weak unconvincing case against vaping has our collective concern over teen vaping led us to ignore the lives of millions and millions and millions and millions of smokers somebody gets it Somebody actually understands what I keep preaching about every single week. If you got the time, click on a link in the description below and take a look at it. And if you haven't looked at any of the content from there, you get three free articles. So it was amazing for me to come across this. It's just, and in my, I know it has something to do with the fact that Big Vape, The Incendiary Rise of Jewel by Times, Jamie Ducharme and The Devil's Playbook, Big Tobacco Jewel and the Addiction of a New Generation by Bloomberg's Lauren Etter were just released into the public. So people are actually talking about the conversation and trying to have an intelligent view of the other person's perspective. I've dug into both sides of the story before I chose this. I wasn't gonna be breathing something in until I knew what was going on and how it worked and the fundamental science behind it. But it's common sense. Four ingredients versus 600 ingredients in every single cigarette. And they're not the only website How about when Yale publishes an article like this? This isn't some rinky-dink little community college in middle of the desert somewhere. Yale News, news.yale.edu published this article. Ban on flavored vaping may have led teens to cigarettes, study suggests. Mm-hmm. When San Francisco voters overwhelmingly approved the 2018 ballot measure banning the sale of flavored tobacco products, including menthol cigarettes and flavored e-liquids, public health advocates celebrated because they keep pushing this prohibition agenda. Yay! You went and banned it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Vaping is not smoking. We covered that already. But these health advocates lump it together as well the same thing. Well, what happens when you ban it? Does it actually make everything turn the way out, turn out the way you expected it to? According to this study, it doesn't. According to this study, had the opposite effect. It drove more teens to smoking deadly combustible tobacco, which is more addictive and more harm than what comes from vaping. I told you so. Like I told you before, when we were talking about the Prince Edward Islands ban, and the idiotic politician there, oh, I thought that they were just going to rename it and call it number five. They didn't have to get rid of the cotton candy or the blue raspberry. They just could have renamed it and called it number four blue. Seriously. Take a look at this article if you're interested. Being on flavored vaping may have led teens to cigarettes. It did lead teens to cigarettes. You've got the data in front of you, but you're too much of a coward to actually stray straight up what's going on. I know. In real science, you're supposed to say you always need more evidence. Well, they weren't the only organization that caught on to this. The foundation... 
for Economic Education published this article. Deadly mistake being on flavored nicotine products led teenagers to smoke more cigarettes. Same study finds. Here's how it all went wrong. Another perspective on how it all went wrong. 1,300 Americans die every single day from diseases associated with traditional cigarette smoking. And here we have a product that is 95% healthier than traditional cigarette smoking. Meanwhile, that hype of vaping-related deaths all came from black market THC products that contain vitamin E acetate. But that's another video on this channel later on. I'm still working on it. You wonder why I'm so fired up? Well, let's move on. British American Tobacco is doing studies on vaping for a long time since it first hit the market because they knew at some point in time something was going to come along that was going to displace their product off of the marketplace. What's going to be the next technological evolution in the tobacco arena? You think that they didn't know about this? You think that they haven't been studying this since the very first electronic cigarette came out? You think that they don't have scientists out there realizing what needs to be done to be able to diversify their company and keep them on the market 50 years down the road? Well, here we are, 10 years of scientific evidence on vaping. 10 years of cumulative evidence. And this isn't the Cochrane Foundation. This one was literally put together by British American Tobacco and contains 300 different studies 300 from over 50 institutions over the past decade. You want to say that there isn't any scientific studies out there? Take a look at it. There's a link in the description below. And you'll come to the same conclusion that I did. This is tobacco harm reduction. Because here's the comprehensive evidence. And if you don't like reading scientific studies... You don't have to read it. Here's a 12-page PDF for you to look down, and they included lots of beautiful pictures. I'm sorry they didn't leave places for you to take your crayons out and color it in while you go and peruse through the data that's out there. Mm-hmm. You're going to find out the same thing that I talk about every single week, how it's important for people to have ready access to the safer alternative product. Instead of banning this product, why don't you ban the product that is killing people every single day? And for every single person that gets killed every day by tobacco, there are 30 people who are living with a health condition that needs medical attention by a doctor and a pharmacist. There's the financial motivation that gets people to fight against the safer alternative product. You wonder why I'm so cynical? It's common sense when you realize the disgusting truth. It eviscerates your soul. Such greed and corruption can take place in this planet. Let's move on. Because here's a hero. And I'd like to applaud ABC in Australia for actually publishing this story. You won't find this kind of story in the press in the United States. None of these press organizations, of which there's only six media companies that own all the media in this country. We're down to six corporations. But that's not an antitrust issue, is it? Different topic. I want to commend Tash and her husband for finding vaping and using it to quit smoking before they had their baby. And here's the actual story of it. And it mirrors the story we've seen on countless other websites and we talked about on the news countless other times. And it mirrors my story. And if you're a vapor, it mirrors your story too. 
you tried quitting smoking with everything out there you tried the pills the lozenges the patches the gums none of it worked then you found vaping and you found a flavor that you loved and i guarantee you it was easy to give up the cigarette it takes time it takes finding the right device with the right flavor and anybody can quit smoking easily if you want to read their story there'll be a link in the description below check it out because as i like to do it's my college education that is rubbing into these news reports always creates a loop always creates a circle you begin and end with the same and here we have michael landell from the world vapors alliance where we started this whole news report today the countdown to the world vape day well here we have michael landell from the world vapors alliance wrote this article and talks about why the impending flavor ban in the Netherlands matters for every single vapor all around the globe. Mm-hmm. Take a look at this article. Because it matters. Every time we get one of these laws passed that makes it harder for us to have access to this, there's consequences. Like there are consequences to all the decisions that our politicians make for us. Vaping is 95% less harmful than smoking and is one of the most successful ways that anybody can quit smoking. Why, why, why are people fighting it? If not for greed, if not for corruption and not for their own personal interests. Well, I know how long this news report is already, and I truly appreciate you guys watching, so I'm going to cut it off here. If you're interested, there'll be a link in the description below. You can take a look at it. I truly appreciate every single week you guys sticking in, tuning in, finding out what's the latest news and advocacy that's going on out there. Vaping has changed my life, and that's the reason why I'm here every single week. I never imagined in the course of my life that I would find something that would truly enable me to give up combustible tobacco. I tried everything there was to try out there. This works. Why are people demonizing it? They're preventing others who are trapped in the cycle of addiction with tobacco to keep smoking. Why? When you have a product that works this good and can help anybody give up tobacco, everybody should be out there marching the streets, advocating how good this is and how it can save the life of a smoker. That's it for me. Have a great day.